Hi guys, happy new year to you all. This is Rickin and welcome back to Comfy Compositing. Today I'm bringing you something fun and honestly super easy to do. We have all had that annoying client request. Can you replace the sky? Or worse, can you convert this shot from day to night? Heavy color grading, manually adding lights, painting shadows, individually correcting every element in the frame. Now everyone knows how to do this on a single image, but the real question is, how do you do this for a moving video without breaking the camera motion? Let me show you a few examples. Same original footage, but completely different sky, different mood, different lighting, different atmosphere, all while keeping the original camera move. Here's the idea at high level. We start with a boring sky video. We take one single frame from that video and then we replace the sky using an image edit model like Nano Banana or Quinn Image Edit. The model doesn't just swap the sky. It composites and rebalances the entire image. Now that frame becomes our reference look dev image. Next, we use Uni3C model to extract the camera motion from the original video. That camera motion is then applied to our reference image, converting it to a video file. The result is a new video with the replaced sky, matched lighting, coherent colors, and preserved camera movement. If your reference image has glares, smoke, fire or atmospheric effects, those can also be animated naturally. This workflow gets you about 80% of the shot done. The sky replacement, global color correction, lighting balance, shadow direction, and camera motion consistency. The final 20% still belongs in Nuke or After Effects. And that's how it should be. To push this even further, we will build a super advanced workflow setup in the newer future. If you already know how to replace the skies in still and you want to do the same for video footages, stay tuned. Now let's jump into the workflow. All right, guys. So this is the workflow. It is a very simple and easy to use five step straightforward workflow. So let's jump into the model requirements. So the model I'm using is 12.2 Animate. You might ask why Animate? First of all, um, Animate is meant for human movement, but I think it's a very versatile model that can do a lot of things very easily and with high quality. Also, unlike the original 12.2 high, high noise and low noise model, this is only 16 or 17 gigs which is pretty awesome. And this can be easily run on uh, even 12 gigs GPUs with uh, um, block swap enabled. Um, so, and if you have less than 12 gigs, you can opt for a GGUF Q4 model for one animate, and you should not have any problems even running on, I think eight gigs of uh, GPUs. Next is one animate relight LoRa for obvious reasons. We are relighting the whole shot. Then next is uh, Lightex V2. This will help us with the step counts and the generations would be very fast. And I think in only six steps, we can get a very decent result. Next is Uni3C Control Net, the one that I mentioned in the previous section. This is to extract the camera motion or you can say camera track and then apply it to our image to video workflow. Then next is VAE. I guess everyone should know what VAE is by now and clip vision, this is text and code and VAE is for latent embedding. So, and then this is the folder structure where you need to place all the models. Now, after you've done that, let's move on to step one. So you make sure all of your models are placed and then you need to come in and select those. And same for, for the LoRa's, Relight LoRa and Litex 2V. 
And then over here, I have a Uni3 control net lo loader. So once you once you place it in the folder, just come over here and then connect your um, file, safe tensor file. And then next is uh, the torch compile and block swap. If you have uh, Sage Attention installed, enable this and uh, plug this one in and select to Sage Attention. If you do not have Sage Attention installed, you can choose SDPA and unplug this one. And next is block swap. So like I said, um, I think this is great. Uh, this one 2.2 animate is only 16 gigs. So if you have a 16 gigs of VRAM, you uh, might need only 20 value of 20 block swaps. And um, if you have less than that, you can try 40 <clears throat> because one 2.2 animate has 40 blocks to swap. Um, and block swapping is again, um, putting some of the, um, the model onto your system RAM and some on GPU so that it doesn't crash when you're um, loading this model on your GPU. I hope that makes sense. So moving forward, we choose our VAE, 2.1 VAE is pretty good. And then regular Clip Vision H safe tensor. So this is our step one. The next one is we load our footage over here and then we choose 16 um, and then later on you can of course do video interpolate to um, your desired fps and then for now i'm using 832 by 480 but this model is capable of rendering 720 f uh, p resolution but mind you it takes a long time so you might want to keep um, the computer running overnight to render it out and for now, the load cap frame load is or frame count is 45 just for demo purposes. But again, the sweet spot is 81 to 121 frames. Um, anything more than that, you can do multiple chunks and then do a blend in um, After Effects or Nuke or even DaVinci Resolve or Adobe Premiere Pro. And then it will also take any audio if you have. But if you don't have, then it doesn't matter. Um, next is we upload a reference frame. So like I said that you can create one single reference frame. Um, for example, I did this using um, Nano Banana, but you can also use open source uh, models like Quen Image Edit. It's very easy. You just prompt it to the desired outcome and it should give you a very good result. Um, and then this will automatically um, for example, this one is a bigger image than our input or output that we want, um, but it will automatically resize it. And then next, um, I have a Quen VL over here to help with prompting. Um, if you want any specific movement in the shot, um, for example, you want moving clouds or um, a time lapse from start to end, and you can prompt it here with the with this you can generate a very detailed prompt and it will give you that um, for this one i'm using a very simple prompt because i don't want any motion i, I want it to be only the camera motion and very basic um, um, animated look to it so <clears throat> moving forward um, this is our output setup um, so you don't need to change anything over here uh, most of it, uh, the normal settings would work well. Uh, one thing is you can also plug in an end image and it will try to do um, a transition from your start image to end image. So this is a challenge for you. Please try this out and uh, let me know what you get. And then uh, the end result is something like this. So if we compare it to our input video, and then quick tip when you have multiple videos, you can do right click and then sync. There is an option to sync preview, yes. Now you can see that the camera motion is pretty accurate. Now, mind you, if there is a very crazy shaky camera movement, to be honest, I did not test it, but it 
might not work 100% well, who knows? Um, but again, uh, try it out and let me know. So this workflow works great for something like this. And um, I think um, it's very common to have these kind of requests from client um, but just because they found a, a footage online, but the time of the day doesn't match. So you can do, you know, change the sky or turn date to night or, and there is, you can do a lot more things. So yeah, this is the workflow. Now this is just one example. There is honestly no limit to what you can do with this simple workflow. You can push this creatively, different moods, different atmosphere, different lighting style. Treat this like a foundation and not a finished tool. Here is a small challenge for you. Take this workflow, replace a sky in your own shot, do something creative with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just more interested in how you think with it and not just the final result. Post what you make in the comments or share screenshot of your results. I'd love to see what you come up with. This is exactly how better workflows get built by testing, breaking and improving them together. Thanks a lot for watching. If this helped you, give it a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.